welcome to a new episode of the Woolly Thistle Shopcast. I'm here with my co-host Maggie. Hi. And I'm Corinne and I own and operate the Woolly Thistle and Maggie helps me run it. Um, we are very, very busy <laughs> doing lots and lots of things and one of these things is talking to you and we're so glad to be here. We were just saying that we love um, starting our Monday mornings this way when we record. Yeah, because we do this on a Monday and then we edit it throughout the week. Thank you, Erica. Erica is our editor extraordinaire and she edits it and we put it up on YouTube on Fridays for you to see. So thank you for watching and thank you for being here. If you're new, you're very, very welcome. If you are returning, you are very, very welcome. Everyone is welcome and we want you to enjoy your time here with us. So Maggie... Shall we talk about what we're wearing today? Yeah. Shall we start Did there? Did you want to tell them like who we are? Didn't I if do that? I... Here? Oh yeah. You welcomed so, them, but yeah, yeah. So I'm Corinne, and I own and operate the Woolly Thistle. Um, and I started the business. Well, it'll be six years this year, and uh, we operate in New Hampshire. We are an online shop, and we are a small online shop. We're not gigantic. But it does take a mighty little team to make do uh, what we do here. And, and this is Maggie, and she is head of marketing and sales here at the Woolly Thistle. And she's a knitter <laughs> as well, which is very, very important for a knitting shop that we uh, have a passion for the knitting and the woolly wool, which we certainly have, don't we? It's, a, it's actually a wonder we get anything done, maybe, apart from knitting. <laughs> yes, yes. <clears throat> It's 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 creeped in on my knitting time a little bit, but yes, it's good. Yes, it's not quite like obligation knitting knitting for you know for work, but it it you know if it ever falls into obligation knitting, we know we're in trouble. Yeah, no, we're not there yet. No, <laughs> we're good. And you know, I don't know. Do people like obligation knitting anyway? I mean, even the name suggests it's negative. This is when you knit for somebody's birthday or Christmas, and you're sort of obliged to knit. Um, I avoid that pretty much. <laughs> yeah, I don't really feel obligated to knit it unless I really want to. Yeah, that's it. I mean, you knit if you knit what you want to, and you knit for people that you want to that are knit worthy. I think too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Maggie, a few words from you as to who you are, and I think you said it. <laughs> well, Maggie, you were you were, like, you were the very first employee. Yeah, I was the very first employee. I was. I started uh, one day a week packing orders uh, yep. when you were still. You very know, baby spare room yes we were over my garage yeah yeah it was a lot of fun yeah every friday she would come in and pack orders which meant i could do bill paying and things like yeah. that which was good yeah it was and really good. you have grown with the business maggie really came into her own during the start of covid yeah because everybody who packed orders for well not i say everybody you know the couple of people who were here and packing orders could not come into the shop for the first couple of weeks so I was trying to do social media, packing orders, paying bills, doing all the things. And Maggie said, you want me to do some social media? Yeah, you're, well, because you, you said to all of us, I, you, I need people to help. How yep. can you help? What are, yep. you, what are you willing to do? And yeah. I'm like, I, I think I could do that. So that was it. And then it just grew. <laughs> <laughs> we reeled her in with the social media. And now she's in charge of all marketing, which is quite a task. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun, though. It is, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, do you ever feel like, you're so lucky to get to do this. I <laughs> get to work with me. <laughs> I mean, I choose to be here. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I feel I'm, like, I'm, though, I think everybody who comes to work wants to come to work here. I think so. Yeah. And that's, that's what we want. Yeah, um, for sure. It's, yeah. It's, I, I've, I like that I'm able and encouraged to just keep growing. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the Woolly Thistle is growing. We, um, we definitely are growing. But we like to keep a feeling of, you know, kind of smallness so that, you know, you do feel like you can get in touch with a human being or, you know, get your questions answered. Um, so we do we do try to keep yeah. that uh, in contact feel with you. And I think the podcast here is part of that is so that we can just talk to you and share our love of knitting and wooly wool. Yeah. Yeah. And we know you enjoy it, too. So it's good. Thanks for being here. And okay. I enjoy reading all the comments. We had a oh lot gosh. of comments last time, yes. and it's it's just so good. It's amazing. Thank you. It's, it really is. You know, um, we put this out on Friday, and we start watching the comments so that we can answer and yeah. sort of be on top of it. And it just, thank you. you. You say the loveliest things. You're enjoying being here, and we appreciate yeah. that very much, for sure. And, you know, if you give us the thumbs up and you subscribe to the channel, then more people will get to see it too. So that's yeah. important. We appreciate that help because 
we want to, we are woolly evangelists. We want everyone to <laughs> enjoy and learn about woolly wool. And we do know that we're getting um, some customers and viewers that are new to woolly wool, if not new to knitting altogether. Yeah. So I think if you're just a brand new knitter and you're starting out with the stuff we love, you're miles ahead. You're miles ahead. <laughs> this is the best. We are biased. <laughs> just a little bit. Yeah. So Maggie, tell us what you're wearing. I haven't worn this one on the show in a little while. Okay. And I thought, I'm going to wear it. I love it's a this good sweater. Day for I it. get this. I wear this sweater all the time. This is the Tree Light by Jennifer Steingast, mm -hmm. uh, who is at Knit Love Wool on social media. Yep. Um, huge I'm, designer. Huge designer. And a lovely person. And Very down to earth. I, I just love the fit of this sweater. I know. It's so cozy. It's knit in Let Lopey. It was written for Let Lopey too. It was wasn't written. It? These I I just used the colors and the. It's perfect. We actually have kits for this, but yeah. our Lopey stock is a little up and down right now. They're they're not being too consistent with their availability, but yeah. COVID, I think. So yeah. anyway, but yes, I it's guess, lovely. But, um, yeah, it's just a really nice. And you're wearing it with a nice. long sleeve t-shirt underneath. Yeah, I do. I I usually wear a long shirt underneath it. But you don't um, find but otherwise, it. Otherwise, very cozy. Yep. Not too warm? No. No? I'm usually chilly. You're so usually this freezing. Is, this is perfect. Yeah. It's so nice. And it doesn't pill. And have you noticed no. it shedding I mean, I get like layers? maybe one or two like, yeah. little pills, but nothing. I don't think that's even this yarn. <laughs> it's not else. even from this sweater. No. You're just um, picking up stuff. I'm just picking stuff up. Um, <laughs> I, I know maybe a little bit of shedding, but not a whole lot. Yeah. And I knit this a few years ago yeah. now, and it's still, yeah. it just and gets it, better. And it's got a lovely neckline, and it fits really well. Yeah. That's good. Um, I'm knitting, or no, I'm wearing uh, this lovely <laughs> cardigan that I don't think I've ever worn on the show before, because I finished this years and years ago. It's a 100% BFL yarn, but I don't remember whose it was. It was, it was mass-produced, though. Um, this is when I first started getting really into knitting again and it the design is called tangled yoke and it's by uni uni jang yes uni jang and i find it really challenging to knit a cable horizontally and i remember the kids were really little and my husband took them away for the weekend up to um northern new hampshire and i spent the whole weekend ripping this out and trying to knit it ripping it out and trying to knit it and I had the best two days of my life doing that. Wow, it looks challenging. You know, once I got it, I got it. But it took me a while because when you when you knit a cable, you're going up the way. So I was going up the way, but I was doing it, you know, laterally, I guess. I, you know, all of this was happening in one row and then the next row and the next row um, for this much instead of usually you'd knit it this way. So. And also, it was... It looks mentally confused. Like, I'm sitting here looking mm. at it going, I don't know how you did that. Because the stitches behind... Yes. They look vertical. Yes. Like you would expect them yes. to look. It's... But the cables look like they go that way. They do. They do. <clears throat> so, you know, you're knitting cables all along the row. Um, fascinating. It's fascinating. <clears throat> and I, I spent two glorious days on my own eating nothing but whatever I could find in the cupboard. <laughs> and it was brilliant. I didn't have to worry about feeding children or anybody. And um, I just ripped this back until I got it. Um, it was before I'd ever steeked anything. So I knit the whole thing back and forth, <coughs> which I would probably not do again. Um, and also it's got this, I forget what you call this. Um, is it a garter rib? This took me oh, forever yeah. to get the hang of as well. And I'm sure- I like the look of it. I do too. So I think, you know, you're knitting a garter stitch. Um, you're knitting a garter row and then a pearl row in between each. Oh, okay. Uh huh. And it's just really nice. So, yep. I'll just stand up for you. This has always been one of my favorite favorite um, nice. cardigans, and um, it's one of those milestones as well. I think where I really was able to take the time to figure this out because I could have left it, you know, kind of half blah right. blah blah. But I don't know. I I. I it really, would have bothered you. It would have bothered me, and I've worn this so much that it was worth that effort. I managed to find the exact same color um, little buttons <laughs> at Joanne's Fabric. So I think, too, that's one of the things I ask myself like when I've 
discovered something or it's not quite right is will it bother me yeah that's the indicator yep. if i'm only going to ever see that then i yep. rip it out rip it out that. yeah um, i tend to get very stubborn and want to <laughs> know that i can do this right because <laughs> this was knitted bottom up so by the time i got here i was so close to the end i'd knitted the sleeves first yeah and so um no and i had that time that precious time and i just knitted like non-stop it was wonderful that which is. tells you how difficult it was for me to do this because i knitted the whole two days trying to figure this out so yeah if you're able to do you this i did if you're able to do this with you know i'm sure i could knit it easier now but um yeah it was challenging for me for sure yeah yeah but i loved it it was fun so that's what i'm knitting uh wearing and uh <laughs> <laughs> i'm done knitting with it uh what are you knitting on right now do you want to share I'm knitting on like two things so our color work accessories cal started show your bag <laughs> wonder woman. I think it's wonder woman i was trying to think this morning who where i bought the bag from it was an etsy seller is it inside it is yeah oh it is well craftsomatic 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 We'll put, we'll put a link in the show yeah. notes. Um, yeah, I hadn't even seen that on the inside. Yeah. And there's some stitch markers there. Yay. But I didn't. So I started a... <laughs> I'm excited. Well, yeah, my cone. It's my first cone knitting. Um, mm. I know, doesn't it smell good? Mm. I was sniffing it. Um, so I started a tapestry go. And that's oh. just about one repeat. I oh, it's a, pretty. I had a headache last night, so I didn't oh, I'm get sorry. much on it. You know, it is. That is um, beautiful. But I kept smelling it last night. <laughs> I read, it's like, are you lovely. okay? Does it smell okay? And I'm like, oh, it smells good. <laughs> <laughs> smell it, kid. So, smell it. Yeah. So um, this is the tapestry cowl so in... the tapestry cowl in what? Jameson and Smith. Which it's um, not written for, but that is perfect. Yeah, and it I feels really nice. I love it. Oh, yeah, it's going to be so squishy. Yes. So I'm using 81 as the dark color. I love that color. 81, yeah. I could pour the cones of that. Yeah. Um, and then FC51, which is a really nice pinky purple um, perfect perfect contrast are you enjoying the knitting yeah yeah it What's looks not to like i know <laughs> it's so cute i love that there's these little brighter pinks mm -hmm. um just throughout as well yeah which is fun are you using chokums yeah how'd you like them i love them yeah did you I get a set them. i did i, I splurged yeah um i had a set of high highs which i really like and i, I still have them but um some of them were starting, they were getting older. It was they like get, a five year, yeah, six year. I yeah. bought them when I first started working yeah. at the shop. Yeah, I, <laughs> I love Haya Haya Sharps, but I have noticed that over time, the cord is just getting really, really coiled. Well, my cords are okay, but I I messed up. I won't. I don't want to blame Haya Haya for me being a brute. Um, <laughs> but I over tightened them mm. and I, I snapped something internally, oh. so now they're fixed needles. Okay. So, like, ah. if I need my size sixes, I either needed to buy new tips. You know, then buy, if you have to buy new tips, you may as well just buy a whole new set. <laughs> that is the logic of So, how, are, how would you like these in comparison? I really like Me these. Me too. I was sort of stunned at how much I really like uh -huh. these. Um, the, the wire. So, the wire is on the chow goose. I, you, I don't know why I'm showing you this, because you probably can't see it. But inside, there's an actual wire. Yeah. And it's got the the plastic or vinyl or I don't know what that is around casing. it casing on it and it's just really nice I that was the thing that kept me from knitting with chai goose for a long time I thought that wire looked too um just too it, it's it bends really easy but it's, it's brilliant it slides like even last night I was pulling mm -hmm. and it just slides really nicely back into the knitting and the join is super smooth and they're not quite as sharp as a higher higher sharp but they're almost as sharp I mean, I haven't yeah. hurt my fingers yet, which is nice. No, and yeah. I don't, I'd never hurt my fingers with the high highs. I had. Um, I once got I think the, I poked my finger once. No, I used um, to get it between but, my finger and my nail and stuff. Uh, and, oh, no, yeah. but yeah, I'm loving the, yeah. the chow goose. I did. I treated myself as well. They have the 2 through 15, and I did get that. Yeah, yes. so that's what I'm working on. That's um, good. That's one of the things. The other thing is, so in the lead up to the cow, um, I didn't know what to work on. I knit a, a gnome for a friend and he's gone <laughs> by the time this airs, he'll be in the mail. Um, and so I didn't know what to cast on and I've had some hand spun sitting, a sweater quantity sitting and I impulsively cast on a sweater. Oh, I, I, I did, Ooh. I did the thing I shouldn't have done, which oh. I did not do a gauge swatch. I just cast on and then started measuring. Oh my God. What is so, this? So it's a love note. 
Oh, but what's the yarn? So the yarn is some um, Romney, and this is a zero to hero project because I bought a fleece <laughs> a few years ago. Oh, wow. And I combed, I washed the fleece. I remember I combed this. the fleece. Um, you, you, and it, it did not huge. want to be carded. Yeah, it's huge. I still have some left because this is hand spun. Um, Wow. I it's don't remember lovely. where I got the fleece from. My sister it's in gorgeous. Connecticut um, has a friend who was like, I have sheep, want a fleece? And so we bought a fleece from her, not knowing anything about anything. Um, <laughs> I was like, sure, just give me a whole fleece. Um, so, and then it wasn't really skirted or anything. So it was a, a big It was a huge process. deal. Yeah. Um, and, and then even deciding, like, it was a pretty, Romney can be pretty long. Is this a natural color? So yeah, this is the natural color. Amazing. I didn't dye it. So hold up your love note because um, it's beautiful. It is. So the love note, uh, tin can knits, and it's got a lacy yoke. Um, Emma has knit like seven. Emma, seven. who's on the show Emma, later. Emma Barnaby. Yep. She's knit like gobs of love notes. And every time she wears one, I'm like, I need to knit a love note. It's similar to, it's different, but it's similar. And I engage in everything. It looks like as the um, ranunculus. Jink is similar to that. I to, it's. I mean, it feels similar in that it's got that like lacy yeah. yoke, and then it's gonna have a big swingy. Yeah, um, it's pretty bottom, but yeah, like I put it on and it does. It fits really nice, it's and then beautiful. you pick up. It's silky to feel. I know. I wasn't sure. So this yarn's been sitting in my stash for. And you haven't blended anything in there. It's one hundred percent Romney. It's just one hundred percent Romney. Ooh, um, lovely. Yeah. So lovely. I keep smelling that one too. Yeah. Um, so. I like the color as well. Yeah, so I'm excited to see it blocked, but now it's great because now it's just round and round and round. So if yeah. I'm too tired to get on there. And I now. noticed you got your knitting barber cords in there. I do because I wanted to try it on yesterday. Uh -huh. So And what'd you think? I think we like it. It's yeah. perfect. Yeah. Um, so I had tried it on fairly early to make sure that I liked the fit. Yeah. Um, it was good. But yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I what did gauge what I are you knitting it? Is it a DK kind of weight? Um so the pattern calls for like a fingering with mohair. Um, I don't remember how many stitches per inch, but yeah. um, it looks you can like do it with a single. A... Like this is just obviously I'm not holding it with mohair. Because um, it's it actually, I mean, it feels silky, but it's also soft and a little fluffy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because it, it does, it has that little gorgeous that little halo on it. Um, but I think it'll be really nice. Yeah, I will. I'm excited. But so yeah, you'll be wearing that more. next time, will you? <laughs> possibly possibly i mean it depends so right now it's not getting quite as much love because i've, I've been working on the tapestry yes um which is lovely but, it's nice to have very different projects on the go yeah because sometimes if i'm too tired i can still just go around and around and around with this um but that one i have to be paying attention you're more engaged yeah yep yeah. yeah. um shall i show off what i'm knitting yes uh let's see i will say too knitting this love note does have me thinking about my next love note and I think I want to do one in Jagger <gasps> with mohair. I think oh, that would be amazing. Oh my gosh, that would be amazing. <laughs> that would be amazing. Let's put a picture of the pattern uh, up on yeah. the screen so that everyone knows what we're talking about. That would yeah. be. That and would it be... does. I'm not a fast knitter, and that's literally that like is a week's knitting worth up of knitting. really, really fast. Um, you mentioned the cow, and that you're knitting mm -hmm. that for your cow. I am knitting um, a hat. Very lovely little uh, motif. Okay, so I'm knitting this hat. Which just, you know, I guess the gray in it just talks to me. It would go with your sweater, Maggie. Mm -hmm. And it's from this new book that we have called Traditional Nordic Knits. It's all this kind of small motif on hats, socks, mittens, and things like that. So I'm knitting that. I'm knitting it in Rama Fennelgarn, of course. Any excuse? <laughs> and um, this is how far. So we just cast on a couple of, well, Friday. So we've had the weekend. I've been knitting. I think I'm showing you the beginning of round there. But it's such... A uh, potato chippy little knit. I don't have to think too hard, and I I love I love the little checkerboard that's coming up, and the little white lines. So I'm doing four oh seven eight for the light color, and I think four oh five. I do too. So <laughs> I'll prove it because um, I just you've seen the pictures of my well, daughter. Four oh seven eight was the color um, in my my um, defiant cardigan too. Oh, was right. Natural. So you yeah. know that one well. Um, you've seen pictures of my daughter wearing this little sweater, but uh, because she has so much hair, we were having trouble getting her her head through here. So I ended up taking off that lovely little um, mohair picot and I just put on a one by one. 
I still got a sewing in. So I still got to close the, or maybe I did that. No, I've still got to close the holes under the arms. And then I, while I was at it, I changed it up. This needs blocking. But um, I This is on, good though, because we get this question a lot. What so question? About this. Blocking? Uh, yes, about blocking and like oh, the, the rolling thing. and will the blocking fix it? Yes, it will. And you can also help it along by, you know, using pins to tack it down when you're blocking. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to block this. I'll bring it in next time. You can see. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I did a little split hem. I just think it's nice for people to see. It's for not sure. just them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So this, this sweater was blocked, but but this part has not been blocked because I just finished it. Um, and so I recorded uh, all this stuff for the vanilla sweater course. This is um, this is held with uh, mohair, so it's very fluffy. Yep, so this is one of the vanilla sweaters that I'm using in the course material, which is ever getting closer to being ready. Um, we haven't really talked about the course here. Do you want to talk about the course a little? Ooh. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm very excited. <laughs> so we, we've we had the vanilla sweater in existence for quite a while now, mm -hmm. a couple of years at least. And many of you have knit it and, you know, it just tickles me no end. Um, but, uh, and so when people ask questions, we obviously try to answer them, but we also have been referring them to our Ravelry group where you will find lots of fantastic discussion about the vanilla sweater and anybody's sort of um, troubles getting through the pattern. Although it is a very simple knit, it's not complicated. Um, but, you know, I think people have been asking for a course. Mm -hmm. And so I have knit. I think the, especially since the Victory Cardigan course came that's right, out. That's right. That's right. People that was, were yeah. asking. So when we launched the Victory Cardigan, we had a course for that. And so it, now I know what I'm doing with that. I've made <laughs> one for this. And I'm really excited about it because you'll be able to purchase the course on its own. And you will get the <laughs> vanilla sweater and the vanilla fluff pattern when you do that. Um... Or you, and then there'll be the vanilla fluff kits as well. If you want to just buy a kit in your size to knit the Rama Fennel Garn and Mohair together, this is a vanilla fluff. Um, and I also in the course talk about the difference between the two patterns because there are differences. And if you get really um, into it, you can start to cross pollinate between the two if you want. Um, you just have to make sure you buy enough yarn if you're going to be knitting something longer than it's called for in the pattern. Yeah. So you want to be careful about that. But um, yeah, so the course is coming. Uh, when's the course coming? When, what's our goal? The course is coming. The goal is March 11th. Not long now. So the recording um, has all been done and edited pretty much. I just have a couple of little things left to do. Yep. Um, and then we've got to build the course online and put all the all the um, text and everything with it and get the videos in the right place. Um, and then we want to make sure we've got kits to support it. Yep. So it's coming and it's really a fun, fun thing. And you know, we We've actually sold a lot of Victory Cardigan courses. Mm -hmm. We just did that to see what, what would happen. And um, you've gone and encouraged us to do more. So yeah. <laughs> so I think that the vanilla sweater is just one of these sweaters that... I think it's great because it'll give you, especially if you're, whether you're a beginner or just a beginner sweater knitter, it, it'll give you a good guide as to how a raglan sweater is constructed. Yeah. Um, or how to apply a neck you know a neck or or um how to do a split hem or how to make sleeves and shaping and joining and all of that stuff it's all very foundational yeah. that once you you know you've been walked through that um you're going to be able to do so much more on your own you'll feel braver and with the victory as well you do get sticking uh you don't get that with the vanilla but you do get sticking and i think that's yeah. been really helpful for a lot of people so yeah, we're enjoying I've doing the courses. I've only seen wonderful feedback about the Victory Cardigan course that, yeah. it, that they felt like they were knitting with you. That's so nice. You were. <laughs> For sure. And actually, yeah. that course didn't ever have an introduction, and I've just recorded one, and I'll be putting it up. So just welcoming you to the course, um, and we'll have that in the vanilla as well. Nice. So I, too, am knitting another sweater, and this is with New To Me yarn, and it's a very wide sweater so far and this is an Aran white irish uh irish sourced wool and it's a three ply Aran white that i oh <laughs> <laughs> that i balled up um so this is studio donegal and it is uh 100 wool and it's 
scoured, spun, and dyed in Ireland. Mm -hmm. uh, Sixty percent of the content is actual Irish wool, and forty percent is New Zealand. And I think they have to do that because there is a shortage of Irish, uh, pure Irish wool. So, mm -hmm. but sixty percent is from Ireland, and this is milled and everything over there in Ireland and um, we're very happy to have it. I think <clears throat> I think too we got a lot in the natural color, the cream, mm -hmm. because this is what you would want to knit your lovely traditional Irish Aran sweater, you know, with all those cables, talking of cables. Um, so we have plenty of that. It is a nice round yarn. There, well, being a three-ply, three right? Yeah. It is lovely and round, so I think you'll get lots of good texture. For this, I'm knitting just, um, you know, a uh, stockinette. But you can see that the little thingy, the waistband is popping. So this is my own. This is, I'm knitting something of my own making, and we'll see how it goes. Oops. I'll keep you, I'll keep you posted. But um, I'm enjoying knitting with it, although, you know, knitting it back to back with the mohair in the Brahma, it does feel a little more rough to my hand. But I think that's just that's just uh, situational is because I've been knitting with something that's super soft in, yeah. in the hand. But actually, it feels really springy. It does. It hasn't been blocked yet. So it'll, I know I'm it'll really curious up. to see how it feels after mm. after you wash it. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Oh, I did have a nice big swatch, but I didn't bring it. Um, okay. And that does soften up um, as well. So, yep, yeah, I will keep you. I will keep you up to date on. It's this. definitely not mohair. <laughs> There's it's no more. It's <laughs> no. not soft. Like it's, it's not, not super that soft. Type of soft. But it's going to but... wear like iron too, mm -hmm. though. It's going to be one of these everyday wears that yeah. you can just. And throw a lot on. of those Irish Aran sweaters, they were they were like this that yeah. you would wear, almost as outerwear. Yep. Yep. Exactly. So. Yeah, I think this is going to be another layering piece. I do like layering um, a sweater mm -hmm. over something and, you know, just having it be loose and comfy and yeah. yeah. So I'm looking nice. forward to that. Yep. So that's that. Mm -hmm. So is that everything we're knitting on? I think so. I what? don't know if we want to show yeah, the Yeah, let's show the yarn because um, it, it's new to the shop. It's been selling really well. We are missing one of the colors. Which um, one? I think it was a burgundy, like a reddish yes, one. Yes, it's sold out. out. Yes. Yeah. But aren't these lovely? These colors are um, inspired by the Irish countryside. Mm -hmm. So this one, oops, oops, this one talks to me. This, uh, but this is lovely, isn't it? Look at it. So it's Irish heather. So very heather, sort of almost not tweedy, but. It does have like different. Um... It's Well, yeah, I think it's got lots of different um, colors going into it, but it's yeah. not nips, it's blended. Right. So that's really nice. So there's this one. This one is called. 3BC8059. <laughs> Not very romantic. Is that the batch or the... Well, so this one says batch number L425. Oh, yeah. Okay. What does yours say? Yeah. Anyway, I think we're just going to... Oh, this feels super I soft. Know. I know. I like that one. And it's blue. Yay. Yay. <laughs> and you can see all the different colors. You know, maybe the dyed ones are actually softer feeling than the naturals that I happens. wonder too, like if it gets, because it gets wet and, yep. you know what I mean? Like yep. the dyeing Blooms process. A little. Yeah. This is the traditional <laughs> gorgeous buttery cream. This is the one you're knitting with. Yeah, dark of course, gray. dark gray. <clears throat> so boring. Excuse I me. love my gray though. So boring. <laughs> this is nice. I like that. Uh, this is lovely. It's a oatmeal-y color very pretty mm -hmm. I like that green yeah really nice so this is a darker green than the mossy green there if you want to put those almost back in the basket yeah thank you okay oh this is nice nice brown heathered natural brown I think and then two more blues. and navy blue which would be great uh for a fisherman's sweater that would be mm -hmm. great and then this nice light blue as well. I don't it's... think you can go wrong with any of these colors. No. And it's really well priced as well. So mm -hmm. it's not going to break the bank, which is always nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. that's brand new to the shop. But what else do we want to talk about? Have we given away a price yet? I don't think we have. We need to do that. Yeah. Sorry. We usually do that very upfront. Um, okay. So uh, in order to be in the running, we pick prizes randomly but you have to follow the woolly thistle on youtube give us a thumbs up and leave a comment 
and then we pick you at random. And this time we have Alison Harris, congratulations. And you said, I absolutely loved the little bit of yoga offered at the end of the episode. I had been knitting for hours and didn't really want to get up and do it, but I did and I felt great. <laughs> Thanks for adding that to your already wonderful episodes. We need to talk about the yoga. Yeah. You guys love the yoga, and so we definitely want to bring that back. Thanks for sharing your feedback with us and Maggie. Yes, um, so Kim of Turning Ground Yoga, um, she has a YouTube channel here, and um, she will be contributing um, going forward. Yeah. And we, we were just thrilled that you guys loved it. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, it makes total sense once it's there that you do need to, um, you know, be ergonomically yeah. careful and... Keep stretching, especially if you want to knit as much as we all want to knit. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, yes, thank you. That was great. And uh, Alison, you are the winner. So send us an uh, email at info at the woolly thistle.com, two L's and woolly, and put winner all in capitals in the subject line, and we will get your $25 gift card out to you. We'll announce another winner later if I don't forget and you don't let me forget. I'll try not to let you forget. All right, that sounds good. So, oh, the other thing I wanted to show, and this is a clip from last time because I hadn't mailed them, it was a gift. Mm -hmm. But the other whip slash FO are little baby pants, and um, we're going to show you them here. And then I have these as a lovely little FO. Baby pants. Both my kids said, Mom, can you knit me a pair? Oh. <laughs> like, I don't know about that. So this was interesting. I'll put the uh, designer's name on the bottom. See? Yeah. They're I knitted so them cute. in Retrosaria um, Bresca. They're so adorable. What do you think of the squishy. handle of them? I like them. I was worried that they were going to be too rough for a baby, but a knitter's baby, I figured, could handle it. Yeah, um, and I and I think of what Scandinavian I, of people course. put their babies in. Yeah, and exactly them in all kinds of woolly wools. Yeah, uh, I haven't so. blocked them yet. Blocked okay. it yet either. This is fresh off the needles oh, this weekend. So cute. I know, and they're knitted flat, which was a whole new experience. Oh, and then you had to seam it. Yeah, oh. it was really, it was really a clever little. They're um, so cute. <laughs> I know. Look, the back is. There's even space for diapers, so you do some um, short rows on the Aww. back to give you a bit more room on the back side. Um, and then you knit it in one piece, like it's got two giant legs, but then you roll the legs in half and you seam up the front. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and it was really fun to do the seaming. I think, though, if I was to do it again, I'd just do it in the round, so that because I was like, oh, baby's going to feel seams. Aww. But actually, it's not too bad. Yeah. I mean, you can, you can feel it. And then I... Um, I did the extra little length on the cuff so that they maybe they last longer. a little bit longer. Yeah. And then the eye cord oh, is just goodness. the cutest. So this is for uh, Caitlin's baby. She had a little baby boy. And uh, this will be going off to her. Oh, my goodness. I hope she loves it. It was really fun to knit. I needed to knit this this weekend. A little baby thing. New so life. So adorable. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, and it's all moss stitch, which I'm eternally grateful that I am now a continental knitter because that was yeah. a lot faster going yeah. uh, with that. So yeah, the, it felt quite um, quite a strong wool in my hands to knit with, and I, I did worry a little bit, but then I decided to um, go with the fact that Caitlin is an avid knitter and she will yeah. um, enjoy this. And there is a lot of bounce in it. I think because they the must look adorable. They're so cute. Baby knits. I hardly ever knit baby knits. Um, but this this was fun to yeah. do. So I hope you think those little baby pants are cute. Um, they're off now to Caitlin. And uh, we can't wait for Caitlin to come back. But, you know, she's going to have time off with her baby for sure. So uh, we're thinking of you, Caitlin. We miss you. Um, so we do have Emma Barnaby coming up mm -hmm. very soon. But before we go to her... Not only that, we have an interview with Ronnie from Aradale in this episode. So we've got lots and lots to share with you. So tuck in and get uh, comfy for sure. <laughs> this is me just getting going and it's about 38 minutes in. Amazing. <laughs> okay, so Emma's coming. But before we do that, let's just have a quick catch up about the Colorwork Accessory Cal that we are hosting right now. Yes. It started on Friday, so a week ago, and we had lots and lots of questions. We did our um, cast on party mm -hmm. on Facebook. We did a Facebook Live. That was really fun. Thank you for coming to that if you did. 
And of course, you can start knitting with us anytime after the start time. So if you want to jump in now, it's only an accessory. You still got another three weeks of knitting time. Yep. So jump in with us. Um, do we want to talk about anything in particular with that? Um, mainly, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, no, that it's for it's mostly for fun. So if you've never done color work before, this is a great opportunity yep. to just jump in and give it a try. Yep. Um, you're welcome to. We do have kits in the shop. You're welcome to buy a kit, but you can also just go stash driving and uh, pick a pattern, any yep. pattern. Yep. As long as it's all over color work. Yep. If um, you're if you're jumping in late and you're fairly new to color work, we suggest you go with a thicker weight yarn because that'll knit up faster. Yep. Because the what the rule is that you knit all over color work, so not just a little band and a cuff or something. Right. So um, go with thicker yarn and that will get you there faster. And we really just want it to be fun and um, skill building and practice. And, yeah. you know, if you already know how to do color work, that's totally fine. Just come and knit um, whatever you want to knit. That's totally fine. And um, we do have some prizes that we will announce at the end of the cal. Yeah. And they are completely random. So there's no there's no requirements. You just have to finish and post your FO picture before the end, you know, the deadline, yep. which is March 18th. And you will be in the running for um, for a prize. And the prizes are? The grand prize is a $75 gift card to mm -hmm. the Wooly Thistle. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll be giving one gift card away in the Facebook group and one gift That's card away right. in the Ravelry group. Right. So, so be in there. Uh, be in either or or both. The Facebook group or our Ravelry group, both are eligible for, yeah. and both are really thriving communities. Yeah. Very chatty in both of them. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and then second prize is a Selboo mitten kit. Um, pattern is by uh, Ellie of Skein Deer. Yep. Um, and it includes two balls of Rama Strick Garn in the colors that you would need, a Wooly Thistle, small Wooly Thistle tote, and a small Wooly Thistle stitch marker by Katrinkles. Nice. And then our last prize. Our last prize is a Care for Your Knits kit. Which I love. I know. And it has a small gleaner, so you can depill any knits. Yep. And we have it. a five-pack sampler of Euclid, um in various scents that you will get. Yes, in a little tote bag. Yeah, it comes in like a little Yeah, pouch. yeah. It's very cute. So those are the um, end of Cal prizes. And probably by the time you're seeing this, the prize fairy will have been buzzing into the groups and rewarding uh, chatty people because we <laughs> want to promote lots of chatter and questions and answering questions. One thing that the Wooly Thistle really uh, prides herself on, and, you know, I don't want to sound funny, but we do, is that... Our, the people that come and knit with us are amazing and friendly and helpful. So if you're a brand new knitter or new to color work knitting, knit with us and ask your questions in the groups yeah. because you will get somebody answering you fairly quickly. And we have just found that over time that our groups are always really amazing like that. And we're yeah. really, really thankful that, that you're like that and that you come and knit with us. So I want to, we want to have a few just random prizes as zipping in to see that, you know, people are chatting and um, you might get a little fairy dust of a prize sprinkled on you, which is really fun to do and fun to receive. And I don't know what they are, so you will just have to wait and see. <laughs> <laughs> Those are really done at random. <laughs> they really, really are. So they could yeah. be all over the place. And, you know, there'll yeah. be one or two here and there. And in both groups as well. We want to reward everybody who's everywhere. Yep. Yeah, I will say too, um, for the color work accessories, Cal, you can knit stranded color work, mosaic, intarsia, yes. any color work technique. Yep. Um, there was a little confusion about that, but really uh, any color work technique yeah. um, is wonderful. And I think it, most people are doing stranded yeah, color work. Yeah, that's typical. But, um, oh, this is important. So for this Cal, we did ask people to sign that's up for right. the Cal. And um, if you were watching on Friday, the, what day is today? The 25th? Today is the last day to sign up for the Cal. And yes. Today's, when you sign up, you will receive a welcome email. Um, check your spam folder just in case. Uh, but you'll receive a welcome email that will give you a free uh, copy of the Balvoni Bonnet pattern. Up there. Yes, so this is the Balvoni. And I'm thrilled to see people knitting this. This is a little hat called the Balvoni Bonnet. And it's just a, quite a few. I know, it's great. And we, we made up kits for this that will accompany the pattern. That you get when you sign up, and um, lots of you are um, choosing different colors. You don't get the colors. kits when you sign up. Let's be. Oh no, you don't get the kit. Did I say that? Sorry. 
But yeah, you I love this. You get the pattern when you sign up. <laughs> this is Jameson and Smith Two Flight. Yes, you get the pattern for free when you sign up. You have to purchase the yarn to knit with it. Yeah. But we've put together a few pre-selected colors that we thought would be good. Yeah. So then And with that. a kit, you would get a small woolly thistle tote. Which is such... I love these bags. I know. And it holds surprisingly it's well. Not like, I have small. my love note in it yeah. right now. Like, right. It's just... Sweaters were... Yeah. Yeah. So nice, a nice size. That's it. Did. Um, and then we put together some colors. Ooh, I just thought this looked so cute. That does look nice. This is your, is this? No, this is fifty. Yeah, that's nice though. That would so be that's very one nice. One of the choices. I think these are some of the other. Yep. Choices. So is, high contrast, and yeah. we're doing just two colors. And one this is thirty six navy and FC forty three. Nice. But this is definitely something you could go stash diving for, isn't it? And just uh, mm -hmm. get your own colors going. Quick hat knit yes and if you so, bought a grab bag yeah oh yeah. yeah yeah so you really only need two balls of the dark color and one of the cream or the light color and uh you don't even use all of that and it's got this lovely little doohickey here like a little should we show the other one yeah too? the other one i knitted in <coughs> biche bouche it's so cute i don't know if you want to yeah and this is really soft too mm -hmm. so this is biche bouche and I love seeing the floats on the inside. You can see they just go. It yeah. just looks fun. It is. Round and round and round. Yeah. Yeah. You can see the pattern. Um, this feels really nice on. Mm -hmm. Very soft. Yeah. Yeah. So you get that for free when you sign up. And like Maggie said, today's the last day. So just, you know, sign up anyway and get the pattern if you want. That's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's it anything else about the cow just keep knitting keep yeah, doing your just color keep work knitting. there are plenty of people who i've already seen on monday morning this cow started what three four days ago they're done um, oh. they finished their first project so they're going to start another one just start yes. another project yes so we'll have we got an fo thread up for them yet on ravelry? um on ravelry the fo i need the if it's it'll be up by the time yeah. you see this yeah. um i think i did open it up the other day because okay. i knew people we, we always have people be. who are just like boom um, yes. Very fast knitters. Um, and then Facebook, though, we've got to use the hashtag. And Facebook, you have to use the hashtag, which is TWT Color Cal 2022. So you've got to use that if you want to be in the running for any prizes, because that's the only way we can find you in there yeah. reliably. So make sure you At do that. At least for your FO posts, definitely make yeah. sure you're using that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think that's everything about the Cal, except that it's really fun. Come knit with us yeah. if you're not already there. If you are signed up and already there, thank you for joining us. I hope you're enjoying it and enjoying your project, whatever whatever you decided to knit. And there's been some lovely projects that people there are knitting. There have been some with. lovely projects. Yeah, so you can get lots of inspiration in either group as well. And I think, too, don't let it, if you are new to color work, don't mm. uh, try not to be intimidated <laughs> by Please those don't. who are yeah. um, really, you know, experienced color work knitters. Yeah. Um, think of it as aspirational. Yep. Um, and, because... uh, and also access to those brains because they will help you if Absolutely. you have a question and you need you need help with. So yeah. this is more a sort of melting pot, a sharing of knowledge, a sharing of abilities. And people are so generous mm -hmm. in sharing tips and knowledge. So, yeah. Yeah. Yep. We have Emma Barnaby coming up, and we also have our interview with Ronnie of Aradale. Should we talk about Ronnie of Aradale's yarn that's coming to the shop? Because this is quite... I almost think we should sort of throw to Emma now because she's got lots to say about color work. That's true. We've already watched it and it's awesome. It is. So please go enjoy. She makes me want to knit. I know. In fact, get, well, you have your knitting, get, right? <laughs> we're going to get our knitting and we're going to watch Emma for a while and we'll see you on the other side. And please come back because we have so much more to tell you yet. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Emma and I'm going to be doing a Shopcast segment today on color work accessories because we are into the color work accessory cal now, which is my favorite woolly thistle cal of the year, um, which you wouldn't know because I'm not wearing any, but they're on the table in front of me. Um, so you'll see them. Today I'm wearing my vanilla sweater, um, which has full length sleeves because I get chilly. Um, and it's knit in Jameson and Smith two ply jumper weight in color FC 21. Um, so I thought I would be resourceful and branch out from Rama when this first came out because the Wooly Thistle was like completely sold out of Rama because everyone was making a vanilla sweater. So I chose this instead and I love it. Um, so if you can get Gage with another yarn, I say go for it. See what happens. Um, I just love, I love how light the sweater is and I wear it all the time in winter and summer. Um, 
because not not everywhere has a summer that has cool nights where you need to wear a sweater, but um, I have many times been uh, in places in the summer where it's been a little chilly. So um, it's nice to have it for all four seasons. So today I'm gonna talk a little bit about this book that you can get at the Wooly Thistle called Selbu Patterns and how to use it because this is an amazing book that I think a lot of us wanted immediately because it's a beautiful follow-up to Selbu Mittens, which you can see there on the cover. Um, and it's just like, look at that cover. I mean, how could you not want that book if you like color work? And look at the back, look at that beautiful jacket. But this is mostly, as you can see here, a book of charts, 400 charts. You can see them. Selbu charts are in the public domain. So you can take a look. Oops, that's not helpful. There's beautiful photography. Beautiful patterns. A lot of them are all over patterns. Lots of interesting information about um, what types of things are represented in these patterns. And, um, you know, placement of the patterns on certain pieces. And it's gorgeous. So. The thing is that these charts are just big square charts and they're kind of daunting and you think, well, how am I gonna use that? So there are some, some like base patterns in the front of the book for a couple of types of jackets and sweaters and like a couple of hats and some socks. But on the whole, it's a little, it's still, that, that still involves a lot of math and a lot of shaping and a lot of complicated kind of swapping of things around if you're working from a chart. So I thought I would give a little introduction to a way that you can use this to create something for yourself that's not super daunting because it doesn't involve shaping. And that brings me to this piece, which is a cowl. It's actually a snood because it's not connected in here, but it's double thick. So we've got, this is DK weight, by the way. Um, I'm trying to find out where the jog is. Okay, it's on the back, good. So this is DK weight, Uist wool in Kalma, which means brave and I would say Shaban because that's how you'd say that Irish name, Siaban, Shaban. It means sand drift. Yeah. Um, and this is Chiviet and this is Hebridean. So I've got gray and I've got a dark brown. So as you can see, I swapped the colors halfway through. I also went to a slightly smaller needle size because the idea was that um, this would kind of sit on your neck and keep you super cozy inside your jacket. And then you could pull this one up over your face. And you can, it's great. Um, and like I showed at the beginning, you can also tuck in the, the, the slightly smaller one the uh to the the smaller half to into the bigger half if you just want um a, this tall cowl that's real cozy on the inside um and this is yeah definitely a wooly wool on your neck um may not be for everyone but if it is you should try it so i used silver patterns to design this um kind of thought okay this is not a fingering weight yarn and then most of my experience is with Jameson and Smith kind of two ply jumper weight type of weight of color work yarn. Um, so I knew that I would need it to be at not quite such a small gauge. So this was more like 22 stitches over four inches going down to 24 stitches over four inches, which looks great in DK weight. And um, again, this is a bit looser. This one's a bit tighter. You can tuck this one into this one if you like, or just wear it totally as a snood. This is quite big. Um, I would say for most people, they probably would not want to make something or mo feel comfortable wearing something quite so large. I just kind of went and saw what happened and I thought that's nice enough to wear. I'm going to keep it just like that. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think this is, uh, I think I, I just looked at the, at the chart basically. Let me talk you a little bit through my process here. Uh, this is on page 241, so it's, you can see the page number on this is 240. These guys don't have page numbers on the grid pages, so this is 241. You can see there it is. I wrote 26 in the corner because it's 20, the re repeat is 26 by 26. 
So that means that you will have to have a number of stitches in your round that is a multiple of 26. So I did 26 times five, which is 130. Um, and that was correct. I might have not been right and I would have had to rip back and start again. So don't be afraid if it's not correct the first time, just rip it out and start again, check your gauge, decide how wide you want it, kind of be be open to, um, to starting over, I would say. Um, and I used a size five needle for this and a size four needle for this, but I'm a loose knitter, so if you're a little bit tighter, you might wanna go like uh, six and five for a DK weight. Oh my gosh, it's so nice. I haven't blocked this, but I have steamed it, so the color work has relaxed a bit, but not fully. Um, and it's quite nice. I think it's gonna be really nice after it gets blocked in some wool wash. Um, so yeah, you if you're not really a woolly wool person, you can always knit something. Uh, this is also something I knit from Selbu Patterns. Um, this is a chart from here as well. This is knit in Jameson and Smith two ply jumper weight. So a much tighter gauge. There's more like 170 stitches in this one. Um, a kind of 30 stitches over four inches fair aisle gauge. And this guy's lined in cashmere. So I just switched. I have the stitches by knitting two together, switched to a ball of DK weight cashmere that my brother gave me for Christmas because um, he's a great brother. <laughs> and I am, um, this is a little more comfortable on your neck if you're not, uh, if you don't love the woolly wool on your neck, because we all love woolly wool. We're here at the woolly thistle for a very good reason. <laughs> so yeah, like um, generally anything with no shaping is kind of your best bet when designing uh, your own piece. So you can do something longer. Um, I have a tapestry, or this is not a tapestry cowl. This is like the tapestry cowl in the length and you wrap it around twice. Um, this I also designed just from a chart book, um, but this is a longer one that um, goes around twice. And yeah, anything that has no shaping is kind of your best friend when you are just trying to design a piece with a chart book like this. And you are a little nervous, maybe you haven't designed anything for yourself before. Um, I'm also gonna show the, the thing I'm working on for the color work cowl because I'm so excited about it. So I am doing a cowl that just has, it's like this, but it only goes around your neck once. It's quite a bit wider and it has a Mobius twist. And I will show you an example of what I mean. I am trying to make one very similar to this, which is blues and gray, but in greens and gray. Making this one in green. Um, so it's got a twist right there. And this is a nice, a very popular shape with designers as well. MJ Mucklestone has one of these in Fair Isle Weekend. It's called Kuvol. Gudrun Johnston has one called Vari, and Andrea Mowry just put a pattern with this kind of twist out called, I think it's called Velvet Mirror. Um, it's gorgeous, it has like Surrey alpaca and color work, super fun. So I'm gonna knit this and uh, JNS <laughs> and Spindrift as well. I have a lot of sort of random balls of Shetland wool in my stash. I thought I would go through some greens for this one. So I've got, um, I've got a dark gray, which is JNS 27. Got JNS 202, which is the lighter gray. This um, looks much lighter than this one after it's been washed. Just FYI, if you get this one on a cone 202, it will wash a bit lighter. Um, and then this is a Jameson of Shetland Spindrift in rye. Sometimes you can get these at the Woolly Thistle, um, but I know some of you might just have them in your stash. And then I've got white. 1A. Most of these are from cones. That's why they're wound into cakes. Um, those are my background colors. And then the foregrounds are... Yeah! <laughs> the lightest one is JNS 1282 Mix, which has got some nice fun rainbow stuff in there. Um, 118, which is kind of a grassy green. I've got Shetland Spindrift in Moss. I like the little big hints of reddish in there. I think it goes with this one, which is also nicely heathered. And I have pine, which is also Shetland Spindrift, very deep. 
Um, this is something you could definitely do with your grab bag. Um, it's, it depends on how long you make this cowl. Um, you might need two balls of some of the background colors, but um, yeah, on the whole, this is a great thing to do with single, single balls of Shetland wool is to do something where you've got a bunch together. So yeah, I would, uh, I'm making this one more ferrile with ferrile bands, um, kind of like this. But again, stitch dictionaries are my best friend in all of these types of things. So I'm really excited to kind of get moving on this. I am behind because I had to finish that um, solo cowl. And um, I would also like to say that I think I'm going to try and knit this again, like the same stitch pattern with um, with like Rama Fennel Garn and just a single kind of pops once over your head cowl because I really want to see how this pattern looks when you um, change the gauge and see if, you know, cause it's pretty big. It's a be like a really nice, a nice sized pattern. Um, so I think if you may knit this at a fingering weight gauge, it will be, you'll have more, you'll have more repeats and the pattern will look a little smaller. So I'm just interested to see what happens with that um, and to play around and to use different wools, different gauges, mix, mix and match all the fun. Um, so yeah, I, I hope that you're inspired to knit your own cowl or something else without shaping or with shaping if you're really adventurous. Um, and, and just kind of see where that takes you. Cause again, I have ripped things out many times. I had to start over. Um, and it can be a little frustrating, but in the end, like just keep trying, cast it on again use a bigger needle or maybe more stitches or maybe a smaller needle or fewer stitches or maybe try with a different yarn and see what happens. Um, the knitting world is your oyster and I can't wait to see what you try with selbu patterns and with stitch dictionaries and all that kind of stuff. So thanks so much for watching. Well, I hope you enjoyed your time with Emma. I know we do always <laughs> and she's just she's lovely and she has such a wealth of knowledge to share too and in that segment she was talking about the selbu patterns book so we have that here if you're interested we also have selbu mittens which is the book that precedes this but yeah. even that cover photo is just amazing. just amazing yeah and we just got this new book in while we're talking about color work stitch dictionaries Alter Knit is amazing. 200 Modern Knitting Motifs by Andrea Rangel. And you can see that there's all kinds of different things. Little sheep there, leaves, yep. and then more traditional things. But these are all very different. There she is. Is that her? I don't think that's her. I don't I think, think that's her. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So we this is brand new in the shop, and we do have that. Yeah. Um, I think having Emma on the show just elevates the the color work discussion i just get too excited but she she, she really yeah. thinks a lot about color and you know. she's really got me inspired to sort of play more yeah um yeah and and thinking too there was i don't know if it was in this one but she recently was talking about choosing color based on their values and that when you I do that have was in the last yes one. and when you do have two that are very similar then you can, um, you know, usually I would take one of those out, but you could then look at going cool and warm and that would be enough of a juxtaposition for there to be contrast. Yeah. So amazing. Yeah, yeah. she really is. Very talented knitter. Very talented knitter and lovely. So uh, now we want to, you know what, let's announce another giveaway. Okay. And then let's talk about Aradale because yes. that is looming large and very exciting. Yes. So we have another winner to give away, and this one is Erica Shifani, and she says, Hi, Corinne and Maggie. Thanks so much for the shop podcast. I really enjoy Rachel's uh, Feral postcards. So do we. Uh, so interesting. I'd love to visit the islands. The yoga session was wonderful. So rejuvenating and relaxing. Have a have a to tell oh have to tell you that you've given me the bug to actually try stranded knitting. I hope you are. And I hope you're in the cow. You said you'll try. I hope you're there. 
let us know when you email us. And uh, she says, thanks so much. And thanks for the information on Wooly Wool. So thank you, Erica, for watching. And I'm, it's so exciting to find a newbie <laughs> who's given it a go. So let us know. Send so go ahead and send us an email at info at the Wooly Thistle. Put winner all in capitals in the subject line. And we will get your $25 gift card out to you right away. And we hope that you enjoy that. So thanks very much for watching. So now we have Aradale, the feature for the for this episode. Yeah. And we've been talking a little bit about uh, their I'm wool. Grab the basket and the cone. And the cone. Oh. From this to that. So this is a giant cone of Aradale beautiful native organic mm -hmm. Shetland wool. This is gigantic, people. And so we are spinning these large cones down into beautiful 25 gram little munchkins that you can do lots of color work with. Aradale, um, we have an interview with Ronnie who is the man behind Aradale Wool. They're on Shetland and he uh, is a farmer or a crofter. Farmer, I think, he's farmer, bigger than a croft. Yeah. And uh, all his animals are raised and um, their yarns processed organically. And uh, their yarns are spun in Scotland at the new Lanark Mill, which is actually a historical um, heritage site. It's a working mill. It's a mule mill, I believe. And so that means that it, it does its thing horizontally rather than vertically. And you can check them out online, actually, if you want to. New Lanark. And yeah, so. So all the yarns are always un unbleached and they are organically dyed. Yes with uh, got certified organic yeah. dyes so any of the naturals they will always be unbleached and uh th this to, uh, i can't describe actually how good this feels <laughs> they just feel like such special yarns yeah and um last time we um we first had uradale um we offered little packs yeah little five six packs um and where you would get you know five to six um cakes colors yeah of yarn and we only had the two ply last time and this time we are going to have the two ply and the dk i believe right. this big cone is actually the dk it's gorgeous it, it is feels amazing. amazing amazing so everything i have here in this little basket is just some of it we're still you can see they don't have labels yet because we have to do that too yeah um but we figured this is the best way to share it with you yes. because um it's very, very special yarn, and uh, the only way we can make it work is to um, buy the cones and spin it down for yeah. you. And nobody needs quite this much yarn, I don't think, yeah. although I feel very attached <laughs> to this. Yeah, so pretty. And um, I know we showed this before last time, yeah. um, our previous, I think it was just the last episode. Or the one before. Or one the of, one before. We yeah. can link to it yeah. um, where Emma, who you just saw, knit us some samples um, this is a DeCrofter's Cap that is knit with Uradale. Yes, beautiful. Um, it just feels amazing. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, very, very, very wooly. It's very wooly, but soft. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. just really nice. And um, So that's the DeCrofter's Cap, which, of course, you know, was last year's... Um, wooly Cap. Yeah. Yep. But knit yeah. in colors that um, Eric... Yeah, so um, I put... Uh, look at that. Oh, beautiful. Amazing. Beautiful. So, yeah. Um, and we will have a blog post. Emma was kind enough to put together a blog post where she talked about exactly how she worked it and the colors that she yeah. used and how she put them together. And she did this from just a few balls of various colors. And so... Yeah, that's actually pretty fascinating. Here, I'm going to put this down for a second. I sent Emma um, two balls of the oatmeal. So 50 oatmeal, grams. 50 grams. And then 25 each of five colors. That's it. And I have all this left. This is what she's and this she is knit left over. And hat, she knit two mitts. <laughs> yes, she knit a hat, the DeCrofter's cap, and she knit two mitts. Um, Amazing. Mixing colors. These are the Demerkin mitts from from Shetland Wool Adventure number one. I think one. Yeah. Um, we'll put it here. And so she the the pattern originally it's two colors. But she, since she had all these, she just went for it. Mixed it up, which is the beautiful um, thing. So she got to play with color, yeah. a little bit of color theory, you know, and what to mix yeah. with what. But I'm stunned at how much, how, how far how the little yarn went. She yes. Yes. yes, how far the yarn went. And so. this is all in the two-ply weight. Yeah, it's yeah. all in the two-ply. So this, yeah. 
And then here, I'm just sort of stunned that there's still all, all that left, left to play with. Yes. Um, so very, uh, it goes a little bit goes a long way, yeah, especially when you're using value. lots of colors because you know you got to use them all. And yeah. Uh, yeah. It's just, it's a lot of opportunities to play. So we've had this here for a little while um, and it's taking us a little bit of time to spin down all these little cakes, yeah. but we're working on it. And this is going to be in the shop, not this, not today, but a week from today. Yes. So, so be 4th. sure, be sure you're on our email list. I think that's the important thing. Yeah. If you're on our email list, you will get the notice that it's coming and, you know, where to be and when. Yeah. We hope to have enough for everyone who would like it. But this is very much a very special yarn yes. and we can't guarantee that, you know, um, it's not going to sell very, very quickly because yes. it probably will. It did last time. It did. But we are attempting to have this in stock um, reliably, but we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Yeah. So what you can, since it's not available today, but you can go to the shop today and see what we, what's coming. That's what we recommend. Um, and you can sign up for the back in stock notice yep. if it's an item that you really, yes. you really want. Yes. Um, we're going to have the yarn by the ball and we'll also have it, a couple of kits for it. So we'll show it sold out until we put it in the shop next Friday. Um, so don't be don't be afraid when you see the sold out. That's just the default. We can't do anything about that. Yeah. But you will be able to click on it and inside there is a notify me link and you can click on that, put your email in there and you will get the notice when it goes in stock. Alternatively, and actually even better would be to sign up for our email newsletter mm -hmm. if you're not already because we will let you know that it's, that it's uh, coming and what time it's going to be in yeah. so that you can be there and ready. Um, yes, and we will also, and also a good reason to go there is to see some pattern suggestions and yeah. you can start your planning um, so that you know what you want to get. Are we going to do kits? We are going to do um, the crofters kits. Um, we're going to have the original colors. There was a, an original Uradale de Crofters cap yep. colorway. So yep. we'll have that in a kit and we're going to have Emma's colorway in a kit. Which is well. amazing. I know. She should be very proud. So uh, yes, yeah, so let's go to our interview with Ronnie. Um, I hope you enjoy it. I think we're going to let that take us out. Yeah. And uh, thanks so much for being here. We love meeting with you. So thanks for being here. Enjoy the interview with Ronnie. Leave us a comment once you have finished watching. Let us know what you think and you will be in the running for giveaways next time. So thanks so much for watching. Don't forget, if you go out, take your knitting. Bye for now. Bye. So Ronnie, thank you so much for joining us today. We're really, really pleased to have you on the Shopcast to talk about your Adele uh, yarns. And we're also really thrilled to now be the US stockist for your Adele. So that's very exciting for us and our customers. So thanks for taking some time to talk to us today. That's no problem. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. So why don't we start at the beginning and uh, tell us what you mean when you say yarn the way it used to be, because that's your tagline on your uh, website. So what do you mean by that? Well, it really goes back to uh, how we developed the farm. Um, we didn't start off as a, um, a yarn producer. We, we, we were... Uh, really uh, just a um, pretty standard farm, but we decided to specialize in the indigenous breeds. And um, it was one of these things where we find in the modern world that uh, uh, products have become homogenous and their identity and provenance uh, is either not too discriminating or vague enough to be meaningless. Um, so when we started to uh, sell our native Shetland beef and lamb, um, nobody knew what it was. So um, it soon became clear that uh, we had to explain everything about the product and uh, we had to um, be patient with the uh, any customers who, who showed interest because they simply um, were experiencing meats that uh, were from um, a long time ago. Um, modern meats don't taste the same and we had to make this clear that uh, uh, this is meat the way it used to taste. Mm -hmm. And um, when we 
made a better success of the 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 meat side of things then uh, we started looking at the wool because the wool was uh, for a wool producer uh, the market was disastrous it was really yeah. really bad when uh, was this what sort of time was this that you were doing it? Uh, that would be at least uh, 10 years ago mm -hmm. roughly 10 years ago um the wool buyers at that time were simply not interested in any colored wool whatsoever everything had to be white so that it could then be dyed into natural colors <laughs> and uh, this all seemed crazy uh, to us and uh, i started to ponder around the subject uh, as to whether markets existed for um, a product of authentic provenance. Um, the way we have sold the meats over the years has developed to a position where we leave the choice of any quality to the purchaser. We don't go out there saying that we've got the best lamb or the best beef or whatever. We, we've we learned over the years because we're a very small producer uh, in a very far away place that we are much better leaving the choice uh, uh, as to the, the, the product, the quality of the product to the purchaser. If they then feel that it's a worthwhile product um, and recognize its point of difference um, and they appreciate that, then um, I feel much more comfortable in myself that we have uh, a worthwhile um, uh, good to take to the marketplace. So let me ask you about that. I'm interested to know where your meat ends up. Are you selling that um, through the mail? Or are you selling that to supermarkets around the UK? What, what happens? No. Um, Fortune sometimes uh, plays a, 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 a role in your life in a way that you never quite appreciate that at the time, um, but uh, it'll be 16, 17 years ago, um, I was at a sort of low ebb and trying to find markets and I... Um, my market research at that time was sufficiently basic that I picked up a, a directory and looked at uh, uh, which were the top meat businesses in London uh, that I felt were appropriate to the product that we wanted to sell. And uh, we found a, a business there uh, uh, which had been there for five generations um, and was in a very upmarket part, part of London. And we have successfully been dealing with them ever since. And they take uh, quite a lot of our lamb um, on a yearly basis uh, through a, 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 a very precise season. Uh, they believe in seasonal products, mm -hmm. which is something that fits with us because at 60 degrees north, um, our grows, growing seasons are less than 100 days. So we don't have the flexibility to supply supermarkets or anything like this. Mm -hmm. But having said that, uh, for the last four years, we've also been uh, supplying a uh, store in Hong Kong. Wow. And um, th that seems to have been quite successful because they have been coming back every year wanting a bit more. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not every product that finds its market near where it's produced. Right. And sometimes to find uh, customers who really appreciate what you produce, sometimes you have to go quite a long way away mm -hmm. um, because uh, locally um, people don't see why people would be particularly interested in whatever yeah. and whatever. Yeah, yeah. 
So, so, um, so another tagline or another thing you're actually passionate about is native Shetland sheep. And I can hear, and everyone can hear that you sound like a native Shetlander yourself. So did you, did you grow up on Shetland and what's your story? Yeah, I've, I, I've always been in Shetland, um, apart from, I spent a few years in Edinburgh at university, yeah. but. Uh, I was a very poor student because I really only wanted to come back to Shetland and uh, and actually work with the land or with the sea or whatever. I, I really wasn't uh, cut out for an academic life at all. Um, so that was, uh, you may say, a bit of a waste, but at the same time, you are what you are and you have to try and find uh, happiness where you can in terms of how you lead your life mm -hmm. and so i i i uh, i came back during the oil era uh, to shetland and shetland was a rather crazy place uh, with the oil developments right. and uh, i couldn't get the kind of job that i wanted so i uh, worked in construction there was an awful lot of construction going on here i worked there for nine years and they kept promoting me and promoting me and and gradually i uh i saved up a bit of money and was able to buy some bits of land and i started with 15 acres mm -hmm. and we now have about 1200 acres wow and where and, in shetland uh, are you where we're we're, we're very central Mm -hmm. um we're we're sort of on the west side of uh, shetland right. um but uh, not far from uh, scalawa and uh, not far from larwick so um we were fortunate to be able to get a, a piece of land which hadn't been um well had been ranched more than farmed and uh, we were keen to try to um, make a, a sustainable unit of it. And I think we're, st we're still trying, but we, we, we're much closer now than we've been previously. What, what do you see the differences between it being ranched and you farming it? Well, um, the ranching aspect often um, uh, follows the uh, agriculture in the UK is, is, although they might not like to hear that say that it's a state controlled industry. So that as the state pays support payments to farmers to do one thing or another, therefore you achieve that type of outcome in what farming looks like. And uh, what had been happening was uh, headage payments had led to there being um, far too many sheep um, and uh, it had led to a lot of the smaller crofts just being um, grazed very, very intensively. Mm. And that has that led to environmental problems, biodiversity problems, and um, that was never something I felt comfortable with. And so when we went organic uh, about 20 years ago, then um, the first thing we did was to reduce the stocking on the farm by a half yeah. and, uh, and then try to secure the income from the market rather than from the government right and uh, it's not the easy thing to do uh, the easy thing is to wait for the brown envelope to come through the door mm -hmm. but then yeah, as i say you need to have a little bit of satisfaction in life and um, uh, so maybe a, a path less tried but still it it uh, it's but helps you sleep at night right right so the the big first thing you did was cut your stock in half but what other things do you do i mean i guess you went for organic certification but what is that yeah 
the the organic certification came as a result of the London butcher who was an organic butcher. There are not too many of them in the UK, certainly not ones of his uh, status. Um, and he advised that, and I gave it a lot of thought. Um, but at that time, 20 odd years ago, um, agriculture uh, in places like Shetland was very, very difficult. And, um, and the market returns were very poor. And uh, so uh, I guess you might say sort of combined with a midlife crisis, then you, 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 you tend to take uh, bold steps uh, and uh, hope that things uh, work out for you. But we, we'd operated conventionally with uh, several different breeds on the farm, but um, when we secured the London market, then we moved completely away from crossbreeds and, uh, and went right back to the, to the native breed of sheep and the native breed of cattle and tried to find uh, an equilibrium between cattle and sheep uh, that uh, was appropriate to the to the land and how we wanted to increase the fertility and uh, and the, the aim is to be as self-sustaining as possible because we're 200 miles away from um, Aberdeen and uh, the cost of freight uh, for any input uh, is astronomical. Mm -hmm. uh, therefore, the more you can produce yourself, um, the more you will find that you're your own master. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that that's important uh, for, for your own peace of mind. Yeah. Uh, um, it's, it's not easy if you find yourself uh, completely dependent on uh, on other things. Okay, coming in. So let's paint a picture of your farm. I imagine I've read that it goes from the hilltop right down to the sea, down to the shore. Is that right? Yeah, the, um, if you can picture Shetland as being like a, a long archipelago mm -hmm. uh, with a central spine of hills, and then it comes down to the east side and to the west side, um, we sort of sit with a chunk in the middle there. And um, so we have a little bit of everything, or we've got a lot of some things. We, we have a lot of peat. Mm -hmm. we, 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 we have a lot of peatland. And uh, uh, so the vast bulk of our land is covered with heather and sages and mosses. And from the top of the hills, uh, there may be 500, 600 feet. Um, it uh, rolls quite steeply down to the sea. Um, typically in Shetland, you find that uh, there, there are green ribbon that goes around the edge of the islands, where the, the more fertile, uh, more mineral-rich soils are to be found. And these are the areas where the old uh, crofts uh, were all situated so that you, you, you get this mosaic of uh, little green fields dotted around the coastline and where the, the geology is, is uh, kind enough, then some of the green fields go a little bit into the land as well. And so that's what we rely on for, for our crops. So the, the, when you balance the, the hill with, uh, with what we call the in-by, uh, the green bits, then you have to develop a, a sort of farming system that um, allows you to make the best of both. Mm -hmm. So that uh, many years ago, there were too many sheep. And so that the hills 
suffered in terms of pressure or grazing. So now um, in our system, then we have very, very light grazing. And uh, the, the, the Shetland sheep, they, they stay out all year round. Um, they don't come inside uh, in buildings at all. Um, they don't receive any um, uh, prepared feeding at all. Um, they are quite content to do their own thing and they move around the hill in little hefted flocks um, so that you'll find them um, moving down the hill through the day and then up the hill at night again. Um, they are not like park uh, fed sheep, um, sheep that uh, learn to live in fields, learn to live in fields. They, they just stand in a fairly restricted area and uh, they eat whatever they're given. So basically grass. Uh, our sheep have the ability to range and forage over a very extensive range of plants. Um, and it's their ability to do that um, which makes them special. Uh, because the on peatland, the minerals are uh, virtually non-existent, so uh, they have to have the capacity to cope without the same range of minerals um, that the that the crossbred sheep would tend to need, and so they do that, and. Um, they produce a lamb every year and they produce a crop of wool. And uh, the fleeces on the sheep become much more important to the sheep than to the producer, in so much as the type of fleece that you find on them is the double coated, mm -hmm. um, which is uh, immensely successful in terms of. Uh, um, keeping them warm and dry throughout the winter time. Basically, the longer guard hairs offer a, a physical protection, and then the much softer and uh, inside hairs um, give the warmth. Mm -hmm. um, and that became, as you keep breeds of livestock, then you start to realize that man has often interfered with them in a detrimental fashion. And uh, oh, throughout the 20th century, the demands of the um, spinning industry um, has been such that they have uh, determined to uh, remove the, the coarser outer hairs such that the sheep only persist with the the inner um, thermal protection mm -hmm. because that's what they would prefer to use in their spinning. Right. Um, and that, as you go along, you realize that that was that was not a clever thing to do for the sheep. Right. For the man who owned the spinning company, yeah, it was a good thing. And um, he doesn't have to card his uh, fleeces so much in order to, to prepare them for spinning. Um, but I felt that what was important for the sheep was also important for me. Right. Um, if the sheep are not comfortable and happy in producing, then um, I too would find that there was going to be consequences of that. So tell me, you mentioned hefted, and that was a question I had. What is it to be a hefted flock, or how do sheep do that? What is it? Well, it's 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 when you see the net of breeds, um, then you start to realize just how clever they actually are. Uh, um, what uh, what happens is that the, the sheep lamb out on the hill. Mm -hmm. And uh, they don't all crowd to one spot. Um, and so that they all have their particular bits that they prefer. 
And uh, when they lamb and they have a ewe lamb, then that ewe lamb gets kept. Um, and so that the next year there's two sheep there and so on and so on and so on. So such that the, the families of sheep uh, can be seen moving through the hill. And so you'll maybe get three, four, five generations of sheep all moving about. They don't move. You see these pictures of vast merino flocks in Australia yeah. moving like uh, locusts across the landscape. But these don't do that. They have, they have very um, particular uh, desires. And so the, they, they uh, tend to move, as I say, in smaller family groups. Mm -hmm. And uh, in that way, the sheep learn and pass on knowledge from one generation to the next so that when the wind is blowing hard from the west, then they go to the east side of the, right. the hill. Right. And obviously they can move around freely then and take advantage of the, the steep parts of the landscape uh, for to gain shelter in. Yeah, and um, there's no trees on Shetland, so it's not like they're hiding under trees. Do you have stone walls or what, anything to do with um, <laughs> we, uh, we have a very few trees. We do have some, okay. but nothing that uh, would uh, <laughs> you would find familiar. Um, we're quite proud of the ones we do have. To. They are a little bit higher than me, but not too much. Okay. Uh, and uh, we do have some uh, stone walls, but not very many. No, it's the, the, the biggest problem with the sheep is if you you confine them into areas that are too small mm -hmm. because they naturally want to roam yeah. such that if it comes snow then they, they they need to go to places where they can find the shelter yeah as okay. soon as you put up a fence um then it inhibits this certain natural uh, behavior yeah and for shearing are they ruining themselves or are you calling them down once a year we always uh, um, car them in um, sort of through July and uh, uh, we have some friends who come along and uh, we can generally manage to club them in uh, a few days and uh, that's really the, the one point in the year where the sheep are gathered into on the on the home fields yeah um and how many and so the, how many sheep do you have i don't think we mentioned that there'll be there'll be about 500 so that's a, um, that's a lot that's uh, well the the you have so many different age groups mm -hmm. and uh, we we don't follow the the modern idea is that you push and push um, animals to produce and you push them into shorter time frames so that um, when people want to eat a lamb, then it has to be very, very young lamb. Mm -hmm. But what we came to realize is when people uh, experience uh, the, the type of meat we produce, that uh, they were far happier with the the, the slow grown meat mm -hmm. because it gave a flavor and mm -hmm. um, it w maintained its uh, characteristics. Right. So, uh, yeah. So lambs is uh, we 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 tend to the meat is produced all year round nearly, um, so that we don't focus. Uh, wholly on uh, pushing lambs to be fat they right. just take the time that they need to take yeah yeah and so um so you call them down round about july and in a few days you get them are you shearing as well do you do the shearing well i i yes i used to and i still do a little bit but yeah. uh, luckily there's uh, some guys who are much younger younger than me who uh, now do most of it because uh, it's Back not uh, yeah, yes not, it is yeah. it is very much we do a little bit of hand clipping after the machine clippers are finished because 
there's always ones who we miss and mm -hmm. so we do have to um, um hand clip uh, with the hand shears yeah. um because after the machine clipping you have to do that early enough in the summer so that the the sheep have sufficient time for the wool to regrow right uh, and uh, so the the hand shears don't clip so tight so uh, you use them after the machines uh, have gone and then you're not taking so much of the the new growth uh, off the off the sheep right right so and you have a nice mix of uh, colors in your flock you actually encourage there to be color and not just white because i think i think there is a demand now more than there used to be for colored uh, fleeces is that right would you say well, yeah, no, this is this is one of the crazy things uh, that you 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 learn as you go along, and um, the idea of dying gray or dying <laughs> black or dying murder, it, to me, it's it's just uh, it's it's bonkers. When I first started out in farming, um, then um, the only sheep you kept were white. Mm -hmm. And um, the only wool you were able to sell was white. Mm -hmm. um, and it got to the stage that there were not very many colored sheep to be found, except in some of the wilder areas. And so uh, these sheep tended to be the ones that still retained the double coat mm -hmm. and also were more intelligent. Um, whereas the white fluffy models tend to be less able uh, and, uh, um, well, to me, a bit stupid. Um, so when we started with uh, looking at the wool and looking at what the customers appreciated, then we started to realize, well, it's much better to retain more colored sheep because I don't have to sell to any um, spinner now or wool broker. And so it made more sense to, to let the sheep be the sheep. And in northern latitudes, then um, a dark colored sheep is obviously going to retain its body warmth much longer than, than a white one. Mm. And so the whole thing seemed to make much more sense plus um it allowed you to develop a color range that uh, was more natural not mm -hmm. just in the natural colors themselves but in the the dyed ones that we produced that uh, it it they also they tend to reflect more than the the local colors right right so you take a lot of inspiration from the fauna and flora around you for your colors. I I like color myself, and I like uh, I like to use color and see color. Um, natural colors are just one part of the the, the sort of the overall environmental palette, mm -hmm. and uh, but uh, it's nice to produce stuff that um, looks as though it's part of the place. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about where your fleeces go. Do you skirt them and on the farm and then ship them down? Yeah, no, we we once the shearing is, is passed, then uh, it's usually my job to go through them all, um, shake them out, uh, take off any bits that we don't want, and then to sort them into the different colors to put away to the scourer. Mm -hmm. And uh, the scorer uh, is down in Bradford. We have to wait until they're able to do an organic score. Right. Um, basically, the organic score uh, is done without bleach. Right. And uh, so that we retain the, the natural white rather than the bleached white. Yes. Um, and uh, I think that the organic score does tend to be more gentle on the fiber. And then there's a little bit more lanolin left in the wool when it goes through the whole process. And so that 
uh, gives it a nicer feel and and it doesn't uh, make it so brutal. Right, right. So that's in Bradford, which is in Yorkshire, in the yeah. North England. And then um, the we take the wool uh, in the bales once it's dried uh, up to New Lanark. Uh, New Lanark is uh, not far from Glasgow. It's a interesting little place where uh, it was built by a, um, a philanthropist, a, a, a industrial philanthropist who um, made his money in uh, spinning mills and then decided to reinvest in a model working village uh, based on water power. Mm -hmm. um, so that the it is powered by a large water mill run off the River Clyde. Mm -hmm. And uh, Robert Owen was his name, and he built uh, this little uh, village with its uh, houses, its school, its hospital, um, its, the factories themselves. Um, it was uh, derelict for a period of time, but was saved by a trust and uh, they have uh, tried to redevelop the the place and in uh, i guess it must be mm, maybe in the teens of years ago it was decided to try to uh, uh, um, uh, recreate the spinning mill itself the spinning machinery had been removed by uh, scrap dealers, mm. but uh, the the gentleman who knew about the spinning process uh, was able to find um, spinning a spinning mule in the borders of Scotland in one of the uh, redundant mills there and take it bit by bit up to New Lanark and rebuild it. So and describe what the spinning mule is, why that's different. Well, it's 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 not a static machine. Uh, it's it's a, a large machine with uh, uh, runners that draw out each ply. Um, and I forget how many plies there are, um, but there's a lot. Uh, but the whole machine moves out and in with a drawn out a ply that I guess will be about nine feet long. And it's and close it, to the ground. It's, it sort of moves along the floor, right? It, it moves along the floor, but at waist height. Okay. And, and so um, the operators can keep an eye on the whole thing, uh, looking for problems. Yeah. But the, 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 the machine is it's quite hypnotic to watch. Uh, and it's also very different from modern spinning machinery. Um, they reckon that it's very good for achieving a very uh, even ply. Um, so they, um, when we first started to deal with New Lanark, then they didn't know us and I didn't know them. So it was yet again a case of uh, socket and see and mm -hmm. see whether uh, the, we could uh, produce the fleeces and sort them in a way that the, the spinner then could take them through to the next stage to produce a worthwhile yarn. Mm -hmm. And um, over the years, we've become very friendly with them and uh, um, we speak regularly. And uh, so they, they get the, the bales of wool and then uh, uh, we tend to spin um, the range of um, greys from um, uh, right from the black right through to the to the white obviously and then on the other side from the murat right through the fawns back to the white again yep. and we do that by blending so that you 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 the the spinners themselves calculate how much um gray or black or murat to add 
to achieve the the sort of palette that we've we've established over the years mm -hmm. but that's very much of a art uh, that uh, um, they seem to be able to uh, to do and um, but every year it it does vary a little uh, right. because the same ship don't produce the same wool every year and because it's not bleached and because it's not dyed then the natural colors do have variation so, so like a fine wine is is environmentally impacted and natural and will change over time depending on what the weather was that year or what they had to eat things like that yeah, yeah um it, the the wine analogy is is uh, as i go along i i i, I find myself uh uh, reflecting on that more often because it's 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 a useful one. Uh, it it shows that not all the factors are under the control of man, mm -hmm. and it, de it all depends whether you're in a business that um, these can, things can be allowed to to take place. Mm -hmm. In the modern world, uniformity is very often what people crave for. But um, I think that that's not appropriate for, for us uh, in these circumstances. And I think um, the audience that are watching this interview very much are looking for that unique quality and uh, differences between maybe even the farms that, that the sheep grow up on, you know, um, they'll result in different yarns and how they're spun. Is New Lanark spinning a worsted spun or a woolen spun? It's a woolen spun. Um, we do try different things. Um, as we go along, we, we have be, been, become a little bit more event, adventurous. Uh, and so we 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 did uh, um, a year ago produce what we call the first club, which was the fleece from uh, the first time the sheep was sheared, mm -hmm. um, which because it's never been sheared before and because they're um, only just over a year old, then you get a very um, soft and uh, very fine. Uh, fleece comes from that and um, so we 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 recognized that other people were producing lamb's wool mm -hmm. which we 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 sadly couldn't produce because we didn't we weren't going to clip the sheep uh, at that age um, so we we produced what we called this first clip and so it it uh, it met with a lot of, of approval and it's it's a lighter weight yarn um we only produced it in in white uh, we did a little bit of gray but uh, i think that it's all been sold but uh, now we're looking at trying a, a modeled uh, yarn um, using some of the fawns to create uh, uh, something slightly different. Yeah, and yeah. nice. See, see how people react to it. Yeah, yeah. So how much has your yarn side of the business grown in terms of the overall farm? Is it as important as the meat? Um, I, it's maybe my son deals with the with the meat side of things um but we are we have reached a stage where uh, we're, we're we're really sort of getting near to being each That's what each sense. other is doing um, um That's but it's yeah no it's it's uh, to me it's it's very very satisfying and encouraging, um, especially for a while before COVID came on to go, we did a lot of uh, farm visits mm -hmm. uh, here. We don't tend to have large buses of that. Uh, it was more smaller groups of visitors and um, they would come either through the summertime or around wool week time. And it was, uh, it was really great having a much more international audience to 
speak to and yeah. to try to tell them about what we did because we simply don't have the capacity to do uh, marketing campaigns and uh, all things, bells and whistles that uh, uh, would uh, bring attention to right. what we do. Right. So we, we rely a lot on people experiencing what we produce and then if they like it, they tell other people and right. so on and so on. But yeah. you do have a, you do have um an Instagram account that people can find you on. And I'm sure most people that are watching this probably follow you already. <laughs> well, yes, maybe so. Uh, um, um, I tend to leave the social media to the younger age. <laughs> <laughs> so um, where did Uridale get its name? Is that a historically? Well, yeah, that, that's, yeah, no, it's a maybe a fascinating story. Uh, I always wonder, you see, we pronounce it Uridale. Okay. And uh, and uh, I wondered for a long time about the etymology of the name, and um, certain features around the valley led me to start to speculate. And then I like Norway. I like going to Norway, and and uh, we started to recognize the same place name in huh. in Norway. And because the islands here still are uh, culturally heavily influenced by by Norway, yeah. then um, it started to become clear that the the first bit of the name Ur um, probably came from the fact that the rock here is full of iron. Okay. And uh, so that uh, we even have. Uh, uh, a little blacksmith's place that uh, um, we uh, um, basically built up again uh, uh, up in the hills uh, where a blacksmith used to dig out the ore and uh, make his, uh, his iron uh, out there and various implements and things. So, um, so we think that it comes from iron, and so the the ur would be the would be the Nor Norwegian for uh, for iron. Fascinating. So it's Uradel. Yeah, Uradel. Yeah. We'll both yeah. start saying it that way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then lastly, I love your sweater. So that has to be your yarn. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Very nice. Is there a pattern for it? Uh, probably in somebody's head. <laughs> <laughs> no, this this one we we haven't uh, haven't uh, put together a pattern for, but uh, we have other patterns yeah, for other yeah, things. But yeah. it's um, um, it's something that uh, we recognise in order for people to be interested in sometimes uh, uh, having a few designs that that people could try and play around with and and see what how it how it uh, came out was yeah. was important yeah no you have a lot of good pattern support and our own emma barnaby has been knitting with the Aradeo and um we'll be looking at what she made with them soon on the show so well, Ronnie, thank you very much for your time. I've really enjoyed listening to, to all that you're doing up there. And I just love that you're marching to the beat of your own drum and deciding what's important and sleeping well at night because of it too. So well done. And thanks for spending time with us. Well, thank you because um, if you weren't there, we wouldn't be here. And I feel that way too. The, the customer <laughs> is uh, very discerning and they, they they love what, what you're doing and all the different yarns that are coming from small producers is so important. So, yeah, well, thank you. Keep on, keep on. And uh, we'll see you again. Take good care. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh.